the Joe Rogan experience. What do you think about Elon Musk saying that uh, overpopulation is a myth and it's actually the opposite? What do you think about that? Well, it is the opposite in places where the developed world exists, like in, in big cities, people are having less children. Yeah, I know a lot and of a lot of guys in their 40s, they're not even Sh- close to being married, no kids, they're not going to yeah. have kids. That's happening everywhere. So it's lifestyle choices for sure that happen when people live in big cities and mm-hmm. they concentrate on their career. Mm-hmm. It also happens when uh, in these uh, places- Most people are in where, the big cities though. Right, and where women aren't oppressed, where women aren't oppressed and they can pursue careers, mm-hmm. they pursue careers, mm-hmm. they put off childbirth. Mm-hmm. It's like the, that's the the theme of idiocracy. Remember the remember idiocracy that movie? I didn't see it. I hear I didn't about see it all it the time. Until recently, it's fucking. I gotta hilarious. go back. I, it's Mike it's, Judge, right? Yes, it's I love Mike Judge. Man. Really fucking. The new funny. Beavis and Butthead movie, better than ever. Really, Have I haven't seen it. Dude, I haven't seen it yet. The new I Beavis, Beavis and Butthead. It's like though. two months old. So good. I had Mike Judge in here a couple uh, months ago. Dude, they go to space, dude. Beavis uh. and Butthead go to fucking. <laughs> dude, it's so good. It's. So so good. So the premise of idiocracy is there's this really smart couple and they keep putting it off, keep, keep putting it off having kids. And at the same time, you're showing this dude lives in a trailer park. He's fucking all these chicks near him. He knocks up her and she's chasing him with a frying pan because she found out he knocked up her too. And it's wild. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like, it just shows how people are just getting dumber and dumber. The dumber people are overpopulating. The smart people aren't having any children. Like your bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the bit from 2005. So that's really what it is. I mean, this is exactly what Elon is saying. Yeah. Is yeah. that in these cities, there is a depopulation problem. Then there's also another problem. Dr. Shanna Swan, we had her on the podcast. She wrote a book called Countdown, and it's all about phthalates and how phthalates are getting into people's blood supplies from plastics and how it's directly affecting our reproductive systems. Mm. It's making men's dick smaller and oh, balls no. smaller and taints smaller. And the way they identify mammals, males or females, is the male's taint is 50 to 100% larger. And the introduction of phthalates, they know these from studies, when you introduce phthalates into the blood supply of these these creatures, like mice and rodents and shit like that, yeah. they're, all of their taints shrink. And that's exactly what's happening to people. And yeah. we have phthalates in our blood. So they do these, these blood tests on people and they find all these microplastics and all this residue from petrochemical products. And if you look at when petrochemical products are introduced, and plastics are introduced in America, and then look at sperm counts, look at miscarriage rates, look at dick sizes, all that stuff, testicle sizes, it's all shrinking. I'll skip that part. All shrinking. <laughs> hey, if a girl, it's all if shrinking. a girl licks your taint, does she get credit for eating man ass? It's pretty close. She's in the neighborhood. You know, it's like your Beverly Hills adjacent. Is that, yeah. <laughs> does she get credit? I think she does. Damn. Yeah. Okay. That's a risky. <laughs> so the, the whole, remember, uh, I, I don't know if you remember, but I've, I brought this up on the podcast before, and I don't know if it's true. I hear it. No, uh, you got. We didn't have a, de- a debunking website or whatever, but um, the uh, saying that the entire population of the world, whatever it is, seven billion or something, can all fit in Texas or Alaska in their own house. Remember that. I think if you stuffed everybody yeah. together like a yeah. favela. Totally. No, no, totally, yeah. right? But yeah. It would have to be that, yeah. that way, right? And then the rest of it's farmland. But, but even, even, even if it wasn't Texas, it has to be the whole United States. Like you could fit the whole population. Of the world. Of the world in the United States. They're right. saying you could fit them in Texas or Alaska. That's what they're saying. Yeah, Nobody's but, debunked that. To, and I, I don't know. No, but, they probably could fit them physically. The problem is where are you no, going to no, get I'm all not the food? Saying, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying, hey, let's, let's all move them to Alaska. This is just all. Oh, here it is. Standing shoulder to shoulder, the entire world's population could fit within 500 square miles. Of Los Angeles? Of Los Angeles. What? Okay, so shoulder think about that. So if that's true, so it must be true, right? right? If that's true, even if let's just say that's off. and it, That's only LA. It's the, the whole United States. I know it's only LA, right? If that's true, okay, there ain't nobody on this motherfucker, dude. That would mean if we got everybody in Alaska or everybody in Texas and the whole world was empty, right. all of South America, okay. Asia, Russia, to me, that means this overpopulation bullshit is a fucking myth, man. But wait that's a minute, a that doesn't make any sense because what they're saying in this Los Angeles thing is people stand shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, I'm just you saying if that's like true, that. if that's no, no, I'm not saying to live that way. I'm just saying if you can do that, if you could fit the whole population, then just you by think size, there's plenty of room for everybody, dude. Right. Back in the when I first started flying and uh, teaching seminars all over the world, I would always just look out the plane and go. 
All I see is just nobody. I see a city way over there, city way over there, and go, it's empty. I go, we should all have a plot of land. <laughs> That's what I'd be thinking. I go, there's so much wasteland. When you fly across the United States, dude, there's only people in LA, New York, Miami, and San Francisco. Everything else is empty, dude. You're on a plane, there's nobody. There's nobody here. So I don't want to, so when people talk about climate change, well, we're, we're causing climate change or overpopulation, and then you got Elon Musk saying, that's the one thing. I'm like, damn, Elon Musk is saying that? He's saying that overpopulation is a myth. It's actually the reverse. I'm like, whoa. So I don't want to hear anything about overfucking population. Oh, it, it, it seems overpopulated when you're in a city and you're living in a favela and they got you all crammed into a city, super smart cities and all that shit. Yeah, it's overpopulated, but the rest of the world's empty. It's fucking empty. Well, there's a lot of people that you have to feed. That's the problem. The problem is not just the number of people. The problem is the resources. Do you believe cow farts are melting icebergs? Cow farts are not the problem. It's actually burps. Dude, it's that's methane. hilarious. It's that's methane. Hilarious. But, it's just, but there's also ways that they use regenerative farming. So it's carbon neutral. You know, there's people that have like, discussed regenerative farming. The only problem is like scaling it for millions and millions yeah. of people. But it's just a natural product of animals eating grass. They, they do know that that happens. Dude, you know how bad those farts got to stink for them to near... melt icebergs? No, it's not that it's melting icebergs. It's just releasing methane. That's what climate change It's all about melting icebergs. Mm. Rising it's, sea levels. Yeah. It's all about the icebergs. It, but it definitely, Polar bears. it definitely contributes to the gases. Do you know, have you ever gone to like one of those places that just grow cows? My parents used to live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I used to have to drive through farmland. Bro, it smells so bad. It smells so bad. Like the people that have I've to I've driven live... through farmland before. You could smell the cow shit. You no, no, the... no. It's not just cow shit where they raise cattle. Yeah. Not, not, I mean, like millions yeah. and millions of cows. I will never believe cow farts are causing climate change. There's no it's way not, anybody's going to believe that. Or their burps. The burps or the fart. It's contributing to the gases that are in the environment. <sighs> the, you know, what Dan Pena is saying and what, what the, Steve Coonan is saying more specifically is that we're talking about a negligible effect in comparison to all these other effects. I wonder. I want to see a documentary on how they they found out cow farts are, are burning a hole in the ozone. Farts. It's really burps. Burps. It's just it's just <laughs> methane, man. But I'm telling you, these uh, carbon neutral farmers, these people that use regenerative farming, they take the manure and they put it back into the soil, and that's that's what they use for fertilizer, and everything is organic. And they're saying if you do it, that's the way animals and the the environment are supposed to interact. What we've done that's so fucked is factory farming, and we've taken all these animals and shoved them into these places and made these toxic lace waste lakes of animal waste. Have you seen those? They fly a drone over these um, factory farming setups that they have for pigs? Mm -mm. Like, dude, if everybody wants sausage and everybody wants bacon, you need a lot of fucking pigs, a lot of pigs, and it's horrific. What they have to do to raise pigs in an economical way so you can get cheap bacon is pretty fucked. That's real. And is that is 100% contributing to the amount of methane that gets released and gases that get released. Because if you go anywhere near those places, they're fucking terrible toxic. They smell awful, man. Like that shit's, in, if you live in that city and they open up like a, some sort of a factory farming setup right outside of town, guess what? Your city's ruined. You're going to smell that shit. You're going to smell, and you're going to get used to the smell, unfortunately, because all factory senses, they, all factory senses detect changes in smells. That's why people stink. They don't smell themselves. Because otherwise, be like, oh my god, I smell. I gotta get the fuck out of here. You detect changes in smell. So if you live in a place that stinks, like some parts of New Jersey when they were like really polluted, they have factories out there. The people that lived there didn't even know it stunk. People had to come visit them and go, what the fuck are you living? Where are you living, man? You know how bad it smells here. They're like, it smells normal because they're used to it. They get accustomed to it. That 100% is contributing to pollution. So whether it's factory farming or whether it's factories. All the different things that people do that we enjoy, if you want electricity, something's got to burn. Like, how do you do it? Do you use coal? What do you do? Unless you're going to do nuclear, it's gonna, you're going to have some fucking, you're going to have some negative effect.